In today's video, we're going to be taking a look here at these current conditions as always, and then we're going to dive into the upcoming pattern. There is a lot of interesting things to see on the upcoming pattern. We're getting a little bit deeper into it. Still, we expect that pattern change. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Colder temperatures and snowfall in the east seem to be a likelihood at this point. Now, as we can see, there's a big trough in the west and kind of reaching now into the central United States. It's about like this. Okay, we have a lot of warmer temperatures spreading in through the eastern United States. That's going to be the case for a few days now. We even have for the west coast perhaps a little bit of warmth making its way in. Could not rule that out. Definitely warmer near that southwest coast than it is further inland, although that's pretty obvious. Now, let's zoom into some different regions real quickly. First things first, for the northwest here, we have plenty of of storminess here for the coastal regions of Oregon and Washington. We see the yellows and oranges maybe even popping up there, indicating more moderate to heavy precipitation taking place within these regions. We can also see that there is plenty of snowfall trying to take place here for a lot of our regions here in the northern Rockies, Oregon, Washington, uh, that is the eastern regions of those states. We see Idaho, Montana seeing plenty of widespread snowfall. You can even zoom in and see that there is some whites and blues taking place here in certain spots. That would be incredibly heavy snowfall. Uh, the, the blues indicating basically whiteout conditions, so definitely some heavier snowfall potentially taking place there. As we work our way further south, we see there is a low near Lubbock, Texas there. We do see some precipitation happening behind this, but mostly we see some warm, humid air it kind of just rushing in ahead of the cold front. And then we see plenty of thunderstorms taking place here around this cold front from Oklahoma up through Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri, Illinois, even up north into Wisconsin uh, and uh, surrounding states. This is interesting, and I'm really proud of this because I remember about a week ago, perhaps, pretty long out, we had said, or I had said, um, that... I think that this looks like a really good setup for severe weather when we saw it on the model guidance. If it wasn't a week out, it was still very, very far out, maybe even further out than that. Maybe some of you can go check. I don't know. But we have mentioned this, and now we're seeing an enhanced risk of severe weather today, lo and behold. Uh, and I kind of just had that feeling all along. So this is one of those moments where I'm really glad we definitely got it right in the long range. Um, obviously, it's better to get it right than to get it wrong. And uh, I'm just really happy that that we got it right because I don't control the weather. So the severe weather was going to happen regardless of if I thought it was going to happen or not. Uh, but I am glad that uh, we were able to accurately predict that. I'm definitely not glad that there is severe weather happening, but hopefully everybody gets safely through it here. We see scattered severe thunderstorm warnings up and down the central United States states. Definitely interesting to see, but the worst of the severe weather is expected down here for Texas and Oklahoma later on today. And we can see some of that developing right now here for central Texas. And that's going to continue to spread eastwards. So stay tuned to the National Weather Service, the Storm Prediction Center, uh, as they will have the best up-to-date updates on this occurrence here. But definitely take it seriously because this setup is very, very good with the, with the cold front underneath here swinging by, the warm air heading in from the south. I could see this being a big uh, tornado day, actually, unfortunately, with that setup there. Uh, now, we do see some snowfall behind the cold front here for Minnesota, perhaps Nebraska, the Dakotas, a little bit there. Lighter, but definitely happening. And then as we take a look at the eastern United States, you can tell there's a bit of a warm and high-pressure bubble taking place in here. Although, for some of these coastal spots, we do have some isolated showers around definitely taking place. Um, perhaps isolated thunderstorms here for Florida cannot be ruled out. As we head further north, these look a little bit like heavier showers at times, but definitely um, the majority of these are looking lighter with just light greens popping up, happening all the way northward into the Delmarva, coastal Virginia, coastal North Carolina as well there. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the modeled guidance and see what's upcoming over the next 15 days or so. Now here we are taking a look at the upcoming storminess. Let's just take this towards tomorrow afternoon, Saturday. On November 5th, as we can see, there is still some storminess happening for the northwest with snowfall here for the Cascades and the northern Rockies there. We do have a low up here in Wisconsin, and we see plenty of storminess taking place in here. Perhaps a cold front still underneath and a warm front up to the north seems to be the setup there. 
and then we can see these isolated showers still taking place along the southeast coast. Let's continue on with this towards Sunday afternoon, and we can see a lot of this activity is now located over the eastern United States here. Some colder air still bottled up here for the northwest, bringing snowfall to Washington, Oregon, even down south to Nevada, Utah, and Colorado as well. So snowfall for certain states there. Uh, as we approach Monday afternoon here, we can see that this snowfall expands for the western United States. It's taking place for a handful of states out there. We can see some isolated and scattered storminess here in the, the southeast as well for Monday the 7th. Tuesday, which will be the 8th here, uh, we can see that this trough in the west is really diving south, and we see plenty of snowfall making its way southward here towards these southern California mountains even, southern Nevada, and regions in Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, and Montana as well. Heavier in spots definitely can't be ruled out. Now by Wednesday, the 9th here, we see this low kind of transfer to east of the Rockies here off of Colorado. Definitely a common place for this to occur. We do have a secondary low to the north as well. And then snowfall happening behind, behind both of these systems basically for the four corner states up through Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, up into Canada also. Definitely seeing a lot of this snowfall. Um, Thursday here, uh, we can see for the 10th of November, we have our low up top. Cold front underneath stretching far, and then a bit of a warm front here. Uh, and this is indicating that very warm temperatures are racing up the eastern United States, and cold air is rushing in behind. So definitely could see some thunderstorms with this setup as well, um, although this looks like a little bit less potential than what I saw with the other one that we're seeing today. Now by Friday, we can see that we have a ridge developing in the west and a trough now in the central United States associated with this cold front here on the eastern edge of that trough. Uh, and this is definitely heading eastward. Cold air rushing in. Uh, and we can see warm air replacing it to the west. Positive PNA perhaps developing out here. And this is forcing that cold air to head towards the east. So we'll see that occur. Definitely stormy as we approach next weekend. So Saturday here we have a pretty major low here along the coast. Secondary low underneath as well. And this is a bit of an inland nor'easter. So it's Basically like a nor'easter, it's just on shore though. We see it located near uh, northern New Jersey there. And this is bringing some major storminess for the eastern United States if this occurs this way. This is Saturday afternoon. On November 12th there, and we see snowfall for states like West Virginia, western Pennsylvania, and western New York, as well as eastern Ohio. Don't pay too much attention to the location though. I know I just named it off, but I'm just telling you what this model is showing. This could move around quite a bit. This timing could be off. It's not the specific details we want to pay attention to, but we want to also note the fact, pattern-wise, not paying attention to timing or location, but the fact that this model has consistently, day after day, showed storminess moving along the jet stream when this trough does move into the eastern United States, and that is definitely something that we can take away there. So definitely pay attention to that. But not the timing, you know, the date or the, the location here. It's, it's too far out at this point to pay attention to specific details. Now, by Sunday, this trough will have lifted off a little bit. Uh, we do still have some colder temperatures bottled up here for the northeast. And this does perhaps lead towards some lake effect snowfall that cannot be ruled out with this cold air moving over top. That's by Sunday afternoon there. By mon Monday afternoon here, we see a lot of the same, so colder temperatures here. And then, let's see, by Tuesday, we have another snow system potentially moving through. Again, dates aren't important, location is not important, but the fact that we're seeing back-to-back -back snowfall events with this trough, that is important to take away. Uh, we get more of a coastal storm as well, so that is important to note also. The trough is kind of becoming more enhanced again by this point. This is Thursday, the 17th here. Uh, we have a setup something like this, so definitely a positive PNA out there. I'll explain that more in detail in just a minute. Uh, Friday, we're seeing a lot of the same. And by the time we reach Sunday, early on Sunday the 20th, we get a little bit more flat here with the pattern, which it is very far out. 384 hours is obviously a significant time. Uh, that's a significant distance from now, but... Uh, definitely interesting to note that we get back to a flatter pattern at the end there. We'll have to see if this model sticks with that or if it eventually sticks with the trough in the east again. Only time we'll be able to tell. Now, total precipitation through the next 10 days is, is pretty explosive um, here. We see the whites are going, or better yet, 15 days. The whites are going to be 
uh, practically no precipitation. Your grades will be a tenth of an inch or less. Your greens will be a tenth of an inch to half an inch. Your blues half an inch to an inch. Your yellows an inch to two inches. Your reds two to five inches. Your browns there being five to ten inches of precipitation, which is a lot for this time of year. The northwest is used to it, but other areas not so much. And then those blues within those grayish brown areas are 10 to 15 inches of precipitation. And we see quite a bit of that for Oregon and Washington there. Now, total snowfall through the next 15 days. If you're anywhere in the grays, it's dusting. If anything, blues being 2 to 6 inches of snowfall. Purples, 6 to 10. Pinks, 10 to 20. And then your pastel blue is going to be 20 to 30 inches of snowfall. And then your pastel pinks, potentially going to be upwards of 30 to 40 inches plus. We see a lot of that out west for the mountainous regions. Now let's just walk through this temperature pattern. Right now what we're in is a classic negative PNA pattern, which means the western North America regions are colder than normal. Everything moves upstream or downstream here from the western United States and Canada into eastern United States and Canada. So this is over here downstream. Over here where I'm putting the check mark is upstream. So, you know, if there was a rock upstream, it's not the downstream areas that are impacting where the water moves around this rock, it's the upstream areas. So keep that kind of concept in mind. And that will tell you that this over here is not is is directly influencing this area over here. It's not this area over here that's affecting this area, it's the other way around. So because everything's moving downstream. Keep that in mind. So that's why we pay so much attention to what the temperatures are like over here, because if it's cold over here, warm and cold are like oil and water. This warmth is going to move around the blue area there, the cold, and it's going to move into the east. So that's what a negative PNA does nine times out of ten. And as you can see, we stick kind of with that for a while here. But by the time we're reaching the 11th, we see something interesting happening. A strong cold front is rolling through. That allows for the cold to spread eastward. So we see a big Arctic blast here around Sunday the 13th. That'll be Saturday the 12th into Sunday the 13th, something like that. And then what we have, have happening, you might notice some warmer temperatures spreading in here for around Tuesday the 15th. This is crucial because this is a positive PNA trying to build back in. Positive PNA being warmer than normal conditions for the most part out here. This forces the cold air, like oil and water, to move into the eastern United States, the opposite of a negative PNA there. We see a lot of this happen. Look at that. It happens just like I draw it. A classic positive PNA pattern. Warmer building into the western North America regions, and then eastern North America here, seeing all the cold temperatures move into this region. This is another big Arctic blast that this model is indicating around. Friday the 18th, but again, date isn't that important. What's important to note is that in this pattern, we see multiple Arctic blasts. That is the takeaway here for sure. And then this is when we get back into a flatter pattern, but we still primarily have this warmth over the West. So I am pretty confident that we're going to see the cold begin to still move into the Eastern United States for later in November, but only time will be able to tell. Be sure to subscribe as we will keep you guys up to date with this pattern every single day. We make daily daily uploads here on the channel. Be sure to subscribe to get those in your subscription box. You can even hit the bell icon to get notified as well. That's a totally optional though. Leave a like if you did enjoy the video. Leave a comment down below with your thoughts and I will see you guys in the next video.